Well, Matt Sarah, ESPN reached out and they said, hey, we've added the Ultimate Fighter 4 to ESPN+. Plus. Would you like to talk to Matt Sarah about that? And I said, well, I will take any excuse I can to talk to Matt Sarah. So let me ask you, man, is it crazy to think 15 years later you're still doing interviews about that crazy season? Did you say 15 years? It's been what, 15. No. Fit, f- what, maybe less? Is it less than that? 13? Less than that. <laughs> is it? That's so weird. But that's amazing. Now, now I got to figure out. I mean, it's let's let's, let's look well, it up. Yeah, I, I fought for the title in, in, in 07, and I won the show to get that. It was 06. So I don't know. Oh, shit. Wow. What, wow. Yeah, what you see? <laughs> <laughs> in my head, I'm like uh, that movie Benjamin Button. I'm getting younger in my head. I'm going to. I'm going <laughs> to. But yeah, Johnny, it's crazy, man. It's uh, I'll tell you right now. Uh, this it, I heard the show is coming. They they do where are they when it, where are they showing it? ESPN Plus now, so they're going to host all the Ultimate Fighters now. Well, and how are they doing that season by season type of thing? Yeah, they're adding one season by season until they roll out the new one. So they're adding in like a new one each week, and uh, I think this week is the one the comeback makes it on there. Is it really? Um, you know what? I'm going to watch it with my my family. Uh, that's uh, so funny. This is like breaking news. No, that's great, man. I <laughs> about it, but I will tell you this, and, and it's kind of obvious that that show had. I'm not making a comeback. A comeback, by the way. If you see my eye, it's I was rolling jujitsu. <laughs> bought my ass, Johnny. Tell that to my guys. Uh that show did change my life a hundred percent, man. Changed my effing life, Johnny. Yeah, that that definitely switched everything for you. I mean. uh well, let's just talk about the fact that, look, ESPN is, is calling to set this up. You know, we had a, a lovely PR rep working with us. It's, I mean, is that even crazy to you? I mean, as long as you've been around this and you've seen it grow to think we're on ESPN now. I mean, is that still surreal to you or, or has it settled in that, yeah, this is where the sport was always going to get? When I used to fight before the Ultimate Fighter, the Ultimate Fighter was, uh, you know, I think I heard this before. I'm not taking credit for this, but it was like the the Trojan horse that brought this into people's homes. And you got to see that there's not a bunch of just street fighting barbarians and stuff. <laughs> this sport is more than that. You get to know the fighters and then you get invested and be like, yo, I, I like this guy's backstory. I'm ru- I like him. I like his personality. I'm rooting for this guy or this guy. I, I, this guy's a, a jerk off. I don't want to, I don't want to see, I want to get to see this guy get his ass kicked. So you get invested one way or the other. And it really just changed the uh, changed the whole playing field because before that, I remember getting a call for the fight. Uh, it would be Joe Silva, the matchmaker, and everything was very. I remember taking fights, being like, "Look, I'm going to do this now because who knows when this, this." It felt like it could be over at any moment, and I'm like, "I'll do <laughs> it now for this cash or whatever," only because. This is something I can tell my grandkids when I look back in the day, we used to fight in a cage. They don't have this now, but back then and explain to them what MMA was, but they, they, you know, they know what it is. It's a different, it's funny. It's, it, it's just getting bigger and bigger. And I think the ultimate fight is really what blew it up. Yeah, no question about it. So the ultimate fighter four, I mean, it's still, you talk to hardcore fans. A lot of people still feel it's one of the best seasons ever, right? Because of Come the on. guys that were on there. No, I'm telling you, hardcore fans, they say it's one of the best ever. And I think it was because, you know, you had a whole talented crew of fighters that we knew. But here's why I want to ask you. Because I hear fans say all the time, man, they got to do another comeback season. They got to do another comeback season. Could you do it now? In, t- in today's climate, the way things are, if the UFC said, hey, you know, USC fighters, we're putting a title shot on the line. You guys want to jump in this house and do this thing. Do you think you could pull it off in today's climate, or do you think that was like a just a one-shot deal, right time, right place? That's interesting. A comeback, maybe they could do a comeback show, but for a title shot, I don't know. That, that's interesting. I never really thought of it like if that could fly now. You know what I mean? It was such, like, again, it was such a different time back then. Even when I fought George. Everything was just so. It was still popular at that point in some levels, but it was. I still fall from mainstream. I'd say, like you know what I mean. Like I remember, like back then, like I almost missed my press conference when I went to fight George St. Pierre. I went to go. Uh, I was gonna go see the movie Three Hundred <laughs> with Pete Drago selling a couple guys in the car. And they they stopped me. No, you gotta go. I go. I'm going to see the thing in IMAX. They go, dude. You you're the main event. And I. I mean, that's how much I was so laxed about the whole situation it wasn't like now where it's just so it's so like i'm gonna say mainstream you know 
That's crazy. That, that, that would have been pretty funny if you missed the press conference and we find out you're watching 300. And, and John, what's funny about that story with that was uh, I, so I found out those guys went to the movies. It was uh, Pete Drago and, and uh, whoever else. So I'm like, I was in sandal shorts. I walk over. It's me and all the other camps. Josh Koshik was there, Diego Sanchez, and, and, GS, and GSP with his whole entourage. Me, short sandals. I'm calling Longo. I go, hey, dude, my buddy also, Dr. Sherry. I go, hey, guys, me, I'm doing a press conference. I got, I'm by myself. <laughs> it looked like nobody gave a shit about it. <laughs> it was so funny. I was there, I went there by myself. Everybody, I think people felt bad for me. Like, oh, dude, he doesn't even have a team. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. hilarious. And then, of course, you know, you, you do the unthinkable, man. I mean, one of the greatest upsets of all time, you know, the knockout of George St. Pierre to become USC champion. I'm curious. I mean, dude, you've, you've accomplished so much as a grappler, uh, so much as a, as, as a fighter, so much as a coach. But is that the greatest moment of all time? If you had to pick one moment out of the career is, is you know, the, the, the getting the belt wrapped around the waist and shocking the world. Is that is that the greatest of, of, of the career? Well, I mean, it's different as far as a coach. There's like there's everything's different like emotionally, you know what I mean? Like uh that was that was obviously that was getting my belt was uh, getting the belt and the way the, the fashion to do it, the underdog story, just I love it. I love it. I lived it. I'm better suited in that than a long reigning champion and whatnot. I'm 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 happy as hell with my with my fighting career. Coaching would be a different thing where if you say which is the richest experience there's different experiences, but you know, uh, coaching would, I put that in just its own category. You know what I mean? Like, just like I put the fighting in its own category and you know, it's, it's a different emotion, but it's, uh, you know, they're both very strong when you, when you go through it, you know, for sure. Now here's, here's why I thought this was a great time to talk to you, right? Not only it's always a great time to talk to you, but the ultimate fighter coming out, but yes. here's what I want to ask you about this weekend. Well, a couple things about this weekend. First, I want to start with Megan Anderson, right? Now, yes. Megan Anderson is this massive underdog against Amanda Nunes. And people ask me, John, does she have a chance? Can she possibly win? And, you know, when there's situations like that, I'll always say, hey, you know, it's a fight. I never thought that Matt Serra would knock out George St. Pierre. I mean, that's my go-to, right? Like, I never thought in a million years that would happen, and it happened. So I'm curious yeah. if, if you hear people say something like that. Is that like an honor to you to be this benchmark of like, I'm one of the greatest underdogs to deliver of all time? You know, I show that anything is possible or is it almost disrespectful that you think, well, I got to be the guy that didn't have a chance? You know what I mean? <laughs> so when you hear that, how, how do you how do you think about that? Well, first of all, it's a great it's a great question, Johnny, like because when you I don't take offense to it at all, because if you watch this season of The Ultimate Fighter, I didn't fight the way I fought when I fought George St. Pierre. Or the way I fought Frank Trigg, you know what I mean? Or even Matt Hughes. I fought, or even Carol Parisian for that matter. Like when you, and that fight was before the Ultimate Fighter. I, right before, I I fought with the intention, striking solely to, to get to the clinch, to get to the floor. And you know what I mean? That's that. And so mm -hmm. if I fought like that versus George, fuck, everybody's right. That is a rough night. <laughs> that, I don't know if I'm, I don't think I'm, I, I wouldn't bet on that fight because St. Pierre fought better wrestlers than myself. Not maybe not better ground fighters. I you know I pride myself, Johnny. I got pride. But uh, he's, he's, but I'm saying like as far as you know, Frank Triggs, Sean Shirk, Matt Hughes, Jason Miller, all these guys are probably better straight up wrestlers than myself. So for me to think I could take the guy down and fight my usual usual use my usual strategy is uh, I you know I understand why everybody. I didn't take offense to it at all. I knew why what everybody uh, didn't know, you know, that I was going to rely on my fists. Only myself and Ray Longo knew. And, you know, so it's like, you know, it's one of those things where I don't take offense to it at all. You can watch this, watch this season, and don't get me wrong, I had a couple of good fights. It was a fun fight with Shoney, but, I mean, I wasn't relying on my striking at all. Like, I would do it just to touch him, and it, it's such a strange thing with me, Johnny, because I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit older, so, like, my philosophy, like as as just a martial artist and a fighter, is I as I started off almost like a street fighting type kid. You know, I had some my share of fights and scrapping, and I, I did a tough man contest at 18 years old. Never sparred a day in my life, but still laid out you guys. Uh, one tough guy from Jersey and one Long Island guy, and then the third guy beat me, and he lost in the final. Whatever. Uh, to this day, I got that click in my jaw from that. But uh, <laughs> I knew I had heavy hands, but. 
I had to unlearn all that. And I developed the jujitsu in the very beginning, early on, the jujitsu philosophy is don't strike at all. Don't make that exchange. Don't take those odds of a guy landing a strike. And he, he might be able to take yours. You just get that clinch, get that fight to the floor. Don't, you know, and that's where you take care of them. So I had to develop that. So I had to almost have to unlearn that back with Longo and mix it together. And I don't know. Anyway, it worked out for me, but my plot, <laughs> my aunt, the aunt, the long answer is, uh, I don't blame guys at all. I'm not offended at all. Whoever thought I was going to lose to George because that's their, that's the way they were thinking that I was going to fight like that guy that fought back in the day, you know? That's awesome. Well, it, UFC 259, like I said this weekend, ESPN Plus pay-per-view, of course. Uh, so let me ask you, if you were having to give Megan Anderson some advice, right? She's she's this historical underdog. Now, I know you haven't been breaking down Amanda Nunes, so I'm not talking about technique, but just mentally. What's the mind space got to be like? What, you know, whether it be fight week, whether it be fight night. I mean, you know, she's she's going to hear everybody, right, doubting her and saying how great Amanda Nunes is, the greatest of all time. So what would your advice be psychologically to have your mind right on the night of the fight to go in there and and to believe in yourself, I guess, that you can shock the world? I, at the end of the day, it's it's it's, it's a fight. You know what I mean? So the, crit, no, the critics, the naysayers, the, the people that think you're going to get destroyed, they're not, there's only one other person locked in there with you. So, you know, you could control your own fate. I, I like the, my mentality with George in, in a similar situation, I did not know I was going to beat him at um, 100%, but I knew it was a him or me um, uh, scenario for myself. I was going to say it's either him or me. It's either me or him. One of us is is going out because I, you know, I, that was my, that was my, my, my uh, school of thought on it. You know, so, um, you know, with that, I'll tell you right now, because it, the reason why I really went in with that attitude is I saw Jeff Munson fighting Tim Sylvia in the worst main event in UFC fucking history. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen that one? Put that of on. Of course. <laughs> hey, if you can't sleep at night, throw in Jeff Munson versus Tim Sylvia and you'll get some, you'll, that'll work better than NyQuil. So listen. I remember seeing that, and, it, and he and he was shooting in from across the cage and going to his back, and I'm like, I could actually do that and survive versus George, but that's not what I. I'm like, first of all, it's disgusting, and second of all, I might have just, I just have one shot at this fucking thing. It's do or die. You control your own fate. F everybody. That'd be my. <laughs> you know? I love it. Well, I have a feeling there's one other title fight that you might be paying attention to this weekend. Al Jermaine yes. Sterling yes. fighting for the belt Saturday night. Listen, I am so intrigued by this fight, man. I, I, I am so excited by this because the clash of styles, right? The clash of styles is so intriguing. These guys are both fighting on such a high level right now. So first, I guess, just tell me, Peter Yan, what do you make of him, man? I mean, the guy has incredible striking. As you guys were, you know, breaking him down, I'm sure. What do, what, what do you see in this guy? I, I listen. I think he's ferocious. I think the word is ferocious. I think he's a natural fighter, and uh, and he's fearless. I think he's truly looking forward to this fight with Aljo, and uh, and and uh, you know that's pretty much it. I think he's a great fighter, fantastic fighter. And and the thing about it though, Aljamain has always been talented, right? I mean, ever since he was on the regional scene, you know, the hardcore is like, man, watch this kid. He's going to be somebody. But right now I feel like he's operating at like an entirely different level. So I'm just curious, like, did something click with him? Do you remember a moment where he took it up a notch or, or you know, was it maybe the loss or, or, or what? Because he's always been talented, but right now, man, I feel like there's just something extra special about him. I mean, I think if you look at his whole career, the talent was always there, and it's just all how he put it together. Longo would always say that, you know, if I point something out in a fight where I'm like, dude, that was amazing, or it's, and, and but you know, Longo would always say like, look, man, is that guy could do whatever he wants to do upstairs? Like he's, like he really, you know, like is like could be the John Jones of that division. Like you know, that's how talented he is. He could do what he wants. Like, if I had asked, oh, could he do this kind of kick or that? Long ago, he could put that foot wherever he wants it. You know what I mean? And uh, he's put, you know, he puts everything all together better now. And and he, and he just his attitude, just, you know, listen, to come back after two losses and fight an undefeated fighter back in the day versus the, you know, how long ago versus the Pikey. You know what I mean? So, uh, and then he never had an easy fight, Aljo. All, you know, fought all studs. 
And, uh, you know, I think you're going to, you know, I, I believe he's going to be the new champion, you know, and he's going to hold that belt for a while, you know. He's, um, oh, and I didn't even mention his, his jujitsu, his grappling in general is just, it, you know, he, he came into my academy already just talented, but with, with with just natural pulling off stuff. Sometimes I would even correct where he's going because I like to see where he goes. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he's the funk master. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, super happy for him. And uh, I believe he's going to be the new champion. I'm excited, man. I, I really am. I mean, I'm as intrigued by that fight as, as anything we got on the schedule right now. Those two guys are both incredible. And like I said, the clash of styles is interesting. Well, man, listen, Matt, I've taken enough of your time. Always a pleasure, man. Look, you're, you're repping ESPN now. Uh, you got the Unfiltered podcast. Uh, looking for a fight. I mean, is, yeah. is there anywhere else? We, I mean, anything else that we need to know? Anywhere else people can tune in and, and get some more Matt Sarah in their life? Well, you know, if you're ever in Huntington, Long Island, I'm, I still have my Sarah BJJ Academy, you know. Bring a mask, of course. But uh, besides that, of course, me and Jim, myself and my my Jimmy Bird on uh, UFC Unfiltered, we have such a good time on that podcast that uh, it's so much fun. I just love hanging out with Jimmy and uh, having a job where I got to chill with Jimmy and just talk about not only MMA, but all, all kind of fun stuff. It's just, uh, it's a dream, you know? And that's it, brother. You know, they're looking for a fight, like you said. You know, you got to be, a, why don't you be a, a guest on one of those? And go on some I, of our excursions. I'm in, man. You, you you make the call. I mean, you got all the connections. You're the one. I, I know you're the one making everything happen. You make the call. I'm in. You got it, buddy. I'll put a good word in. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Matt. Always a pleasure, brother. All right, Johnny. Take care, buddy. Thanks.